Hi, I'm Alex Archbold, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey. Hi guys and welcome to today's episode. I am driving in the ambulance and that means one thing, I've been out on the hunt for antiques and uh, it's kind of crazy out there right now. Um, there's pandemic scares, there's things happening. Uh, I'm being cautious, but I'm still going out and I'm, I'm meeting with folks uh, where, you know, you can tell people are distancing themselves, but um, I didn't distance myself from antiques this morning. Um, usually the ambulance means that I went out and I, I had a buy and uh, we were successful, I ended up with some cool stuff. So we're gonna head back to the shop. We're gonna offload, I'll show you some of the cool things that I was able to acquire today. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys have got a bit of a history lesson, lesson on some cool items uh, and artifacts. So stay tuned, we'll do an unboxing and uh, we'll go through this stuff together. First things first, let's go see what's in the trunk. <laughs> Now, I don't normally buy furniture, uh, and I have this kind of in here because it was part of the deal, but this is a nice 1920s arts and crafts style recliner. Um, you know, they still make this type of furniture now. It's got a little footrest that comes out, which is kind of cool. Uh, upholstery is in really good shape. And, um, you know, as a, a decorative piece, someone who's decorating an arts and crafts style is gonna really love something like that. Um, so eventually I'll find room for that. And I forgot I had the stretcher in the back of this trip, so uh, I was a little bit worried I wouldn't be able to fit that chair and this inside. Um, if you don't know what this is, I'll give you a hint, that's a lid that goes up top there. You look on the bottom, you'll see what looks like little hammers. This is what's called a roll-up pianola. And uh, this predates the regular player piano. Essentially, it's a player piano that you could push up to any piano and uh, and make it play. Um, this has been in storage for some time. Uh, apparently, it's in working condition. The bellows are okay. Uh, really interesting piece. Um, you know, they only made them for kind of a few years and then they, they did away with them. But uh, don't often find one in someone's basement. It's early, early technology, early musical instrument. Um, and kind of an oddball piece, which is the sort of stuff I love. But um, for now, I'm gonna leave those two in the back of the car. They'll have to find room in the garage at some point, but it's cold out, so I'm gonna go uh, disappear inside and deal with that later. All right, here is the other pile of stuff that I got out of the car. Um, I guess what I'll do is I'll start laying it out over by my counter so I can price it and get it all put away. Let's see first piece I got was a movie poster. Now, it's obviously a war piece, it's armored attack, but when you look at the cast, Ann Baxter, Dane Andrews, there's actually a lot, Walter Brennan, a lot of um, uh, Academy Award winners or Oscar nominees. This film was originally put out as the North Star, and that came out during the war, around 1943 or so, and uh, was later remarketed in 1956 as armored attack. So this would be the 1956 poster um, but it's kind of curious. A lot of war movies came out after the war. This is one that was actually uh, filmed and put out during the war. And, um, you know, they, uh, they changed a few things and put some different lines in and kind of changed the plot a bit. But uh, this came from a movie theater and it looks like someone has done, uh, you know, a very rough job. Maybe this is how the theater would have displayed it at some point. It looks like they had it so you could undo these screws and maybe put a different poster in every week. Uh, it doesn't look like there's another poster behind. It'd be kind of fun if there was like six or seven posters in there, but it looks like it's just the one. Uh, that's what they call a one sheet. So that's your typical movie poster size called the one sheet. Condition, not really great, but in terms of a military graphic uh, for people who collect that sort of stuff, it's an interesting item. Probably worth somewhere around, you know, even in that condition, 125 to $150 or so, just as it is, just as an art piece. Now, you might, hopefully you're going to think this is cool. I thought it was cool. And you're going to find out why I think it's cool. Okay, 
So you look at it, it's a metal box, really well put together. So you might say, okay, well, what did this carry? There's a little hint on the front. RKO Distributing Company of Canada. And there's other uh, labels that have been posted underneath here. So what did this carry? This is an original United Artists Corporation uh, film canister. But the cool thing about this is that this predates um, uh, talkies. This is a silent film era. Judging by the size of the can, uh, the manufacturer of it, this would have carried the very first types of movies. Now, there's no film inside of it. You see how that drops down? Sort of a, a stepped hinge there. Um, really, really neat piece. Uh, I don't know where else you're gonna find something like this. They can't. This came out of an old movie theater. The gentleman I bought it from you uh, runs a bunch of movie theaters, and he bought a building that this was inside of. So that is silent film era stuff. And as we look through the inside, there's uh, other bits that could have come from the theater as well. A nice uh, old speaker grill, and those that represent sort of pipe organs. Kind of neat. I don't know what uh, radio, I think if you just had a speaker, you could probably upholster that and put that on. These are kind of fun. Let's see if I can hold it up and get some light through. They need, they need some serious cleaning. But it is the uh, moon and the stars on a sun-shaped lamp. You can see it's pretty dirty. That would have, uh, this would have likely been in, uh, you know, on a wall, a sconce, um, a decorative piece, very whimsical and it could have been from the silent uh movie era as well there's another one looks like there's a couple in here there's two yeah these look like they've been sitting around for a while there's three of these can you see the moon right there i have to wash that off. i'm gonna wash one and i'll show you what it looks like once it's all cleaned up <laughs> Now it might seem like just a small little piece, but having a few of these can make a really big impression if you're doing sort of a, a wow presentation or bringing back that silent film era. I mean, look at that. How cool is that the little sun and the stars? Those are just details that you don't see in a lot of modern fixtures. And it's just a really fun frosted piece. I'm gonna keep that around. Maybe I can put that into my new build. Okay, let's see. This looks almost like a little work lamp but it, uh, it obviously screwed on it at some point. Very, very simple uh, little probably portable style lamp. You can tell it's old. Look at the braided cord. You can still buy that braided cord actually, but it's not common until this is original to the piece. And that's all in really, really, actually that's like new. Look how shiny that is. This thing's in great shape. Even if a person just needed the cord for an antique lamp, that would give them the uh, original authentic look. But maybe that's meant to go, I don't think it's, it's not meant to do with these because the size is way off. And a random speaker grill. That we'll keep aside. Love going through these little knickknacks. So look, RCA, some little ornamentation. I think these would go on the walls and you'd hang, a, you could hang things off of them. So that would mount, let's see, boy, hard to find a, empty space of wall around here somewhere that <laughs> that would mount on the wall like that. And then you could hang uh, lamps or lighting or other things off of it just so it looked a little nicer. It's got the little finished rosette on it. That's kind of neat. What's this? A random dial. Okay. Oh, that might have something to do with it. There's all these little bits and pieces. I'm not sure exactly what they're for, but um, you know, they might have a use somewhere. Cool. And you can see the impression still left from where the canister was. It looks like they were laid flat and kind of stacked up maybe about that high. But you can see what size it was. This probably had film in it for a really long time. Makes you wonder what happened to the film. Okay, I'm gonna get to this piece here. And some of you might recognize this right off the bat. Ugh, it's got some weight to it. <laughs> so what is this big heavy thing? You might ask, some of you probably already know. 
and no, honey, if you're watching this, isn't uh, this isn't a comment on the state of our marriage right now. But some people do use these as a practical joke. These are actual leg irons um, from the old Fort Saskatchewan prison here in Alberta. Now they don't use leg irons like this anymore, uh, but you know, <laughs> I can see having that attached your foot would really not be much fun. This is where there's a demonstration gone wrong and I accidentally locked myself on. How do you explain this to your wife when you get home? What happened to you today? I got leg irons strapped to myself. Uh, okay, so that goes around your ankle and then you've got this massive, I guess it would go around the back probably so that you would drag it. What an awful thing. I mean, truly. Um, and yeah, this thing, I have no idea what it weighs. It's awfully heavy. I guess it would have to be. Now they reproduce these. Um, there are replicas out there, but essentially that's like a big concrete or cement ball attached to a chain going through it. Uh, and it runs all the way up to your leg. Now I know what this is because they had it kind of hanging from their roof when I went and looked at their stuff. I'm gonna see if I can find a hook around here to hang it and show you guys what it looks like all assembled. Before electricity during Victorian times, you may have something like this in your entranceway or above your dining room table, a very fancy and ornate chandelier. You can see it's got cut crystal. So when you light it up with the oil lantern and get your wick going, that would just give a nice glow, this beautiful sort of floral design. And it's in a remarkable condition too, considering its age. Now, uh, oil lamps, have been a little less on the collectible side lately, but something like this will still always hold its own. Now, some people can, you can electrify them and you can make it so it, you know, if you have a heritage home and you want it to work on electricity, you can run a, a wire into it. This one has never been modified and that's actually what's kind of rare about it. Most of the ones you see out there have had uh, some modern electricity put into it. This one is untouched and we're gonna leave it that way because it is a historical piece that's quite nice. kind of neat too. Manning Bowman. You never know what was used in a theater or in a home, but a lot of this stuff did come from movie theaters. Nice little uh, Art Deco, really early electric clock. Um, nice brass finish on it. So plug it in. It looks like it's in good order. Cable looks good. May as well plug it in and see if it works. Now, when I was there, I just kind of threw a bunch of stuff I thought was cool into this bin. Um, this piece right here, is what they call a PAM clock, or Canadian Neon Ray would make them too. It's not quite a uh, double bubble clock, but it is a glass advertising clock. This one advertising a restaurant that was called The Bagel Tree. Um, looks to be in good shape. The second hand has detached, and it looks as though somebody has tried to uh, glue it on there at some point. But, um, you know, it is a, a functioning clock. You put the lights in the back here. And that lights up real good. You can actually get uh, different sort of faces. People reproduce them. Um, Orange Crush, Coca-Cola, etc. You can put in there. Um, that one's just kind of neat as it is, and it's in good condition. Other than that, second hand. Um, so we'll we'll hang it up. It looks like the the threaded portion's okay. So it's just that one one piece right there might need some reattachment. Yeah, we'll just hang that on the wall with its friends. You can see I've got a few of these advertising clocks and advertising signs. They're always kind of fun things to look at. So uh, I'll eventually get some light bulbs put in it. For now, that'll keep it safe and out of the way. There's also this lantern inside. Now, um, it has a big reflector built on the back and the, it makes me, I don't think it's railway. It is Dietz though, dash lamp. Dietz D Beacon dash lamp. It's a curious piece because it's built almost like a, uh, a camping lantern, but with that big reflector, you'd think it's more for the front of like a stagecoach or, you know, um, a wagon or something along those lines. Peculiar item and kind of cool. And then a couple other little electric clocks in here too. Um, don't know if any of those are working yet, but that's, you know, Maybe I'll have some time now to kind of clean this up. Might actually look good if I just take the paint all the way off and just get it back to that nice sort of uh, aluminum that's underneath there. So a couple of clocks. What's this? Oh, Screen News Associated. Well, these are little film cans. 
that would have had, let's see, FDR trailer. So Franklin Delano Roosevelt, maybe? Could be, um, you know, old newsreels that came in those and they'd play it before a uh, theater. It's a fun thing about buying stuff that comes out of an old movie theater. You just never know what's going to be in there. You can imagine these might have been in like projection rooms. It's too bad that glass is cracked. Mind you, I think it's the same diameter as that clock, but kind of a nice West Clocks. Canadian made. Fun little piece. Very Art Deco looking. And some random bottles, which I'm not a, a collector of bottles myself, so I don't get as excited as our friend Bob does. Uh, nice old master lock. It's got the key. Another razor. That's early safety razor. It doesn't have the... Uh, it looks like it might be nickel-plated brass is what it looks like. Not in the greatest condition at all, but it might be good for parts. And this is a, uh, a rest for a sad iron. Of course, a sad iron being the uh, type of iron that you heat up on your stove. And uh, when you heated up your iron and it was red hot after coming off your stove, you'd be ironing your clothes with it and you need somewhere to put it. So that would sit on your counter and you put your iron on top so it wouldn't wreck your surface. So it's a, an iron rest. And that's a nice ornate one too. There are people who collect these based on what images they have. That looks like a nice crown. Let's see, Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Hmm. Made its way up here to Canada. Well, now there's an old thermostat. This is a um, thermostat for your heater, for your house. There's how you set it, and then it has a little thermometer on there. You could use it as just a thermometer too, but um, if you're doing a restoration of an old home, you want it to look correct, that's the kind of thing you want to have. Now this box, is nothing but rolls for that uh, pianola. Now, some of these, uh, actually I think most of these, are completely different than what you'd see in a more modern or a, a different player piano. So these rolls are not gonna work in anything but that uh, pianola. But uh, some of these, let's see what music we got. Probably a, the old Madrid, in old Madrid. The Barber of Seville. I always think like Looney Tunes some of these old uh, classical songs that got used in so many cartoons but a lot of classical music um oh, that's a good box one there's got to be 10 20 34 there's got to be about 60 of them in there so that's a healthy box full and then it looks like there's maybe parts that i'll have to be very careful to keep these together because uh that might be something important for that machine uh we'll keep that box aside until i know what it's used for and if you ever see these in your grandma's attic or your grandparents place um it looks like a suitcase but it's not let's open it up i'll show you what it is some of you probably already know what it is but we'll open it up and show you it's a gramophone portable gramophone or graphenola um the idea was you'd have your little crank here it uh would go in the side right Move that out of the way so we can see it goes in the side no idea if this thing works or not this is what you take out on a picnic Okay, well, we'll crank it a little bit and we'll see if we actually get, look at that, and it still works. So it's got a, a needle on it, see if I have any 78s around. <laughs> okay, apparently I don't have any 78s kicking around, which is crazy, usually I do, but um, judging from the condition of this, I would say it's a working piece. Um, Still lots of fun for collectors. There's a spot right there to put your extra needles. And look, it has the needles in it still. So this thing probably got put away. Uh, that's the brake right there. So that'll stop it from going. And to uh, take your crank out, you just go in the opposite direction like that. C crank comes out and goes in the little carrying spot and away you go. Uh, and there was two of them. Now this one, uh, you can take, you don't need electricity or power or anything. It'll work anywhere. That one's a little different. So same concept, looks like a suitcase, opens in a different direction. This also plays 78 records. And look at that secret little compartment there. That's where you'd put them. That's where your records go. Kind of fun. This one's made by Columbia. Yeah, Graphenola.
that's what they call this model. And it's electric. So um, where the other one was hand crank, this would have been one of the very first electric models that came out. But look, I guess the idea was you'd plug it in and then this kind of gives it a bit, bit of a kickstart to get it going and then the electric motor would take over. I'm not gonna attempt plug it in because the cable does not look super great, but a nice rare early piece of electric music history. So a lot of cool finds like the antique gramophones, uh, but the top two items that came in for me this week were probably the United Artists silent film era uh, movie can. That's just so cool. And where are you gonna find something like that? It's really, really neat. And of course, the old ball and chain. So when somebody says, oh, I bet you gotta go talk to the old ball and chain. Well, I guess I could, that could be my Wilson now. I could talk to this. Um, <laughs> I could use it as an excuse when I can't buy something. Oh, the old ball and chain says I can't get it. Um, I'll refer to this like for wisdom, but um, that is a really neat piece. You just don't come across a, an antique ball and chain very often. So some really neat stuff today. Really excited about the finds. And uh, it just goes to show you never know what someone's gonna have in their garages, basements, or attics. So thanks for watching today's episode, guys. Uh, make sure to uh, subscribe if you haven't already. You can check us out on Instagram at Curiosity Inc. Y-E-G. We're also on Facebook under Curiosity Incorporated. And uh, stay tuned for more episodes. We'll see you all soon and bye for now.